The name Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, associated with tank warfare in Europe and North Africa during World War II, might conjure up mental images of the famous Desert Fox riding in a panzer, reviewing maps or commanding battles. What one might not imagine is that in the midst of commanding frontline troops, Erwin Rommel carried a camera and took pictures with artistic imagination and precision amid gunshots and shell bursts. In fact, he created thousands of striking war photos prior to his death in 1944. Rommel's photography shows that the field marshal had an eye for irony, great attention to detail, and an attraction to nature. An overwhelming majority of Rommel's photographs document simple and poignant moments in the everyday lives of his men, as well as their final resting places. Rommel took the majority of his wartime pictures during his campaigns between 1940 and 1942. Although he took some during his command of Army Group B and the fortification of the Normandy coastline in 1944. According to his son Manfred, Rommel's camera equipment was stolen by American soldiers who looted their rural home in 1945. In addition, Rommel's wartime photography collection was carted off by two American counterintelligence officers who discovered it in a trunk during a search of the house. They provided the Rommel family with a receipt for the confiscated material. However, the family later was unable to locate the officers or discover the whereabouts of the pictures. Today, the photograph collection can be found in the National Archives and Records Administration in Washington, D.C. Rommel had an eye for drama, and he was drawn to overpowering shadows, stark light, and dominating lines. He often took larger-than-life images of machines, tanks, and vehicles. He also captured dramatic images of sand dunes, steep craggy cliffs, and massive sandstorms. He liked to photograph people in the midst of activity. Rarely are his human subjects idle or completely at leisure. Perhaps Rommel's most haunting composition style, one that seems to have been his favorite, was to capture lone human figures against vast or overpowering backdrops. For example, soldiers walking across wide, open spaces being totally dwarfed by nature or advancing tanks. With regard to the human subjects of his photos, the field marshal tended to focus mostly on soldiers. He clearly enjoyed mingling with the enlisted men because he took many pictures of them on and off the battlefield as they were engaging in a wide variety of activities. He also occasionally photographed prisoners of war. Rommel was emotionally attached to his soldiers, which is evidenced not only by his writings, but also by the numerous photographs of graves that he took in France and North Africa. Other pictures show burial services or German soldiers decorating the resting places of their comrades. Aside from soldiers, Rommel the photographer had several other chief areas of interest, including nature, airplanes, machinery, military maneuvers, battle action, and war devastation. Rommel's affinity for nature found its way into his pictures. Like many Germans, he loved hiking, hunting, fishing, skiing, swimming, and exploring nature. His interest in the outdoors was lifelong and can be attributed to the fact that he grew up in a rural and mountainous region of Germany, known as the Swabian Alps. Camels, horses, and donkeys number among a variety of animals that Rommel captured in peaceful scenes across war-torn lands. Some camel herds were captured by his lens when he shot images as an aerial photographer during reconnaissance flights. Most of the time, he piloted the aircraft himself. Even while maneuvering his plane over battlefields, he somehow managed to snap a collection of aerial shots. At times, he also photographed planes flying over him as he stood on the ground. Machinery captivated Rommel. He was a gifted engineer who showed great interest in battlefield equipment and designing fortifications. It would be inaccurate to say that Rommel was fascinated only with tanks. Generally speaking, he photographed anything with wheels, engines, gears, or metal parts, whether intact or in ruins. He took many photos of damaged and derelict vehicles in addition to working ones. Sometimes he photographed pieces of vehicles blown apart during battle. Battlefield chaos provided the scenes for many of Rommel's most striking pictures. 
Amid ear-shattering shell explosions and gunfire, Rommel risked his life to take compelling photos of hot war zones. Photos frequently show other soldiers around him ducking for cover. Much can be gleaned about Rommel's personality from the types of photos that he did not take during the war. Absence at times speaks louder than presence. This is quite true in the case of Rommel's photo collection. Rommel took no photographs of dead people. This is unusual since many war photographers visually document death. Also, many American military officers in World War II took photos of dead enemy combatants. Yet not a single dead German, Italian, or Allied soldier of any type appears among Rommel's photos. Similarly, gore has no place in Rommel's photos. Pooling blood and gruesome injuries, most certainly a real part of battle, are non-existent in the field marshal's collection. There are no pictures of human beings in demeaning or helpless situations. Photographs of prisoners of war show them being treated respectfully by German soldiers. There are no images of brutality or dehumanization. Rommel also took no propaganda photographs, although he frequently allowed himself to be exploited by the government for propaganda purposes. Rommel's viewpoint expressed through his pictures reveals an absence of military aggrandizement. In a similar vein, Rommel took no war trophy pictures. It was typical for many German soldiers to take gloating pictures of destroyed cultural landmarks in foreign countries or to photograph themselves striking victory poses in conquered territories. This was not the case for Rommel. His photo collection contains no pictures of himself or others performing acts of propaganda-related cruelty. In its entirety, Rommel's photography collection provides a gripping visual history of World War II from the viewpoint of one of the most famous commanders in modern history. The photographs are valuable, not only in the view of the strategic military mind that created them, but are also silent witnesses to the war as Rommel, a lone figure against a background of vast chaos, experienced it. The pictures that Rommel took showed us that he was a high-spirited person who tested danger, a keen observer of human irony, and a leader who enjoyed mixing with his troops, yet was drawn to scenes of personal isolation. During the last years of his life, Rommel unfortunately destroyed many of the papers and writings that might have revealed more of his thoughts and personal convictions. His pictures, however, endure as visual documents of spontaneous and vivid moments that he never got the chance to revise, edit, or refine. His photography is significant and insightful because it gives modern historians a clear and candid view of a military leader who, throughout most of his life, tended to be minimalistic in expressing his mind. At the same time, the photos open new doors for historical discoveries, providing numerous opportunities for historians, military enthusiasts, and curious onlookers to reinterpret their existing knowledge of Field Marshal Erwin Rommel and his military campaigns. By viewing Rommel's photographs, onlookers gain a rare opportunity to look through the lens and experience the same sights as he did during the war.